my name's Sarah Jane, I'm from the UK communications team and today I'm going to be asking Jan the questions that you want to ask him. Hi Jan, great to talk to you. We've got some questions from our associates across the globe that we want to ask you today, so let's start. In your webcast we shared um, the Q3 results, yep. which still don't seem to match our promises and need of growth. What are the three key areas that we're going to focus on and what do you think is blocking us from performing at the moment? Yeah, no, I think we're in the middle of the turnaround. So, you know, the results always uh, are behind all the activities that we're doing. And I think it's fair to say that lots of people are doing lots of things to reset and reboot this business. And we're starting to see some pockets of success. Take Mexico, which is starting to implement many of the things we're talking about. They're growing 7%. Argentina continues to grow fast. You know, there are other markets that are doing better. But as a whole, we still don't uh, have the, the performance that we want or the reserve or that the market expects. So I think the life is simple. We have to start, one, recruiting more and more quality and better types of representatives who are keen to learn, who are keen to earn money. And therefore, it's about scaled quality recruiting. You've got to get more representatives in. It's as simple as that. If you have fewer reps, we will have little business. If you have more reps, you have more business. But we've got to improve the quality of the recruiting. Once you've got them in, you've got to help them, teach them, train them. And in the first 90 days, and I want every country to start doing this, in the first 90 days, get them to, let's say, sell to make a hundred pounds. And we've got to in, have an intensive care by our sales leaders and our zone managers and our organization to get enough people to, let's say, the target earnings. When she's at the target earnings, she won't leave anymore. She'll be happy. She'll be satisfied. Guess what happens then? More people say, oh, that lady is doing well. She seems to be very happy. She's happy with the service. She's happy with the training. She earns a little bit of money. I want to become an Avon rep. And guess what? We get more people joining uh, Avon because it's working. So more quality recruiting. And then really once we get people in, really focus on retention. And retention is about training and train them to earn more money. If we do that, we will grow this business. Okay, so if we continue underperforming, what alternatives might our shareholders consider for Avon and how much time do you think we've got before turnaround isn't a possibility? No, I think, one, you never know. The world is a, a, a very dynamic place and we're a listed company and people will look at us and say, okay, do we trust this management? Do we trust this team to be able to start delivering? So they buying that this is going to take some time. They buy that the quarter was still bad, but they certainly buy into our story. So, but the trick now is, as all of the reports say afterwards, we like the story, but now start showing us some of the numbers. So that's why it's really important now that Q4 is going to be better, and then Q1 is better, Q2 is better. So we can control our own destiny if we can start delivering some of the results that we need to, need to start to deliver. Absolutely, and I think you know, one of the things that plays a big part in it is culture. Yes. Um, and um, I read an article um, about Andrea Young. Yes. And um, she had the skills, she had the experience, she had the get up and go, um, but where she struggled was changing the culture, and particularly with change-resistant yep. people. What can we do to help change that culture? I think it's a few things. Culture is basically the way people behave, the, what people do uh, as a norm. And we've set out the new culture elements uh, yesterday, which is only one element of it. I, I don't think that it, that is an important element of it, but there's also, you know, what is leadership about? And I think that is, for me, even more important. It's that we have enough people that understand that we need to change, the desire to change. And that is really, really important. And if people still in Avon think they don't need to change, then they really need to go into the shower and turn it on and put a cold shower over them. So we need to change. Our business model isn't working so well. We don't have a market problem. We don't have a direct selling problem. We don't even have a brand problem. We have a model problem because reps are leaving. So we need to change. That's the first thing in, in, in changing the culture. Because if people are still holding on to that, well, that's a problem. The second thing is then an ambition to want to change. Because you may say, yeah, it's not working and I'm not happy. Then I need people to say, yeah, but I want to be part of the group of people that turn this thing around. And I start to see more and more people that love Avon, that love our 6 million representatives, say, no, 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 I see we, it's not working, and I want to be part, and I want to change, and I'm going to be part of that. The third thing then is, what are you going to change? Is the recipe for change. You know, how does, as Kate talked about, the winning strategy in terms of on the field, how are we, what are the tactics, what are we going to do? 
And I think that is going back to question one, is making sure and becoming obsessed that she's happy. And then the final thing, which I think Avon has lost that muscle, is the execution culture. The detailed follow through of to say, okay, we need to change. We know we want to change. We now know what to do. But we're going to do it. And we're going to do it with speed and with execution culture. What plans have we got to optimise our product portfolio? For example, are we going to remove sale items or anything like that? Yeah, we've got a crazy complex portfolio. It is just ludicrous. I'm still not clear how many SKUs we have. And if you look at the distribution of our SKUs, it's just crazy. So I think, actually, I think maybe we should become radical. We should, become, we should have our SKUs. Because the, the fact is that you don't get a better business by just selling so many small products that are don't, not contributing to the sales. If you have fewer products, you get a more focused brochure. It's easier for the sales lady to sell fewer, better products. By the way, we, don't, we can then improve our estimates and, and because we don't have to estimate all these products. If you therefore have a better estimate, we have less out of stock. We therefore have fewer stocks in the, in the warehouses. We have to produce fewer stock. We therefore have less ingredients, less formulations. We can concentrate our buying. So when you have so many products, it's a sign of not a good run, a well-run business. So we just got to cut uh, the SKUs and really reduce it by at least 25 to a third. If you launch a new SKU, take another one out. And be much more disciplined to manage a, a tighter, uh, better, more simple portfolio. Because we will have less stock, better forecasting, better service, easier for the rep to sell. We can make, create more space and more storytelling in our brochures. So I can only see advantages. And having done this many times in my previous life, you never lose any sales either. You, in fact, your sales go up because you just do a better job on what you've got. Um, in one of our webcasts, yes. you quoted the famous quote, <laughs> rules are for the obedience of fools and the guidance of wise men. Yes. Does this mean we can break all the rules? Well, fools would break all the rules. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what guidance. A wise man choose which rules to follow and which rules not to follow. But of course, some rules are never to be broken. You know, so in terms of our code of conduct, our core values, our core beliefs, which we're proud of, you know. And I, in fact, you, we've written them down, which is great. But as also said in the webcast, these things are not things you have to do, but we want to do. Because to be honest, we really are a company that's purpose-driven, that wants to make it a better world, that has a very strong opinion about the power of women and our role in society. And as part of that is a company that's honest, there's a high level of integrity, lives by our values that are 130 years old. And those ones, we will never break. Not because we don't have to break them, but because we don't want to break them. Because I want to also lead a company. I think all of us want to be in a company that's a good company, it's a values-based company. So those ones, no tolerance. So that's important to, uh, to say. Okay, so um, it's quite clear that the front end of the business needs kind of looking at. What ways can we take advantage of our diverse talent across the business and push for change where our associates can contribute most. Yeah, no, that's really exciting. I mean, the, the nice thing about Avon is in our new strategy of opening up and this sort of democratizing beauty. We make beauty available to everyone. We have premium quality and amazing value prices. And I think that's really important. The same thing with, with, our, with our reps, you know, we're open to anyone, anyone, anywhere around the world. If you want to earn some extra money, or you want to become full-time, or you, or you just want to be a really keen fan, we're open to us as well as in our, in our workforce, you know, we need to have a diverse workforce, experienced people, new people, different genders, different nationalities. I think this is super exciting and I think the, the opportunities and challenges for Avon, we need everyone's brains, we need everyone's passion, we need everyone's ideas to come together to turn this business around and turn it an exciting business again. So I really believe in, in a diverse talent pool. Uh, in meritocracy, so you know, wherever you come from, whatever you do, where, whatever your background is, if you're good, you can succeed in Avon. I really strongly believe that. That's one of the values I think that we must have in this company. Um, and we need everyone because everyone will have a different angle as long as it's targeted towards her and making her more successful. And I think that is the big message I want to keep repeating. We've got to become obsessed with her. Because if she's happy, if she loves dealing with Avon, if she loves the way we treat her, if we love, she loves the way we support her and train her, and above all, she can make some money, 
she stays with us. And, and we need all the brains of the whole organization just to focus on that. If we do that, we will grow this business. But we need everyone in the whole company to think about that and be obsessed about that. I just have one final question. Um, currently in a recruitment freeze, does not always help us to deliver the changes that we need to do? Because we need the right people in the right roles and often you know, we need to recruit from outside. How do we deal with that as a business? Yeah, we've, obviously you know the, the recruitment freeze is really in the current business situation we can't continue to recruit. We need to get our costs down and it's a, it's a good way and a practical way to get our costs down. We have a mechanism for exceptions, which I approve all the time, but that goes through the line to say, you know, critical vacancies. Obviously, we, we will fill those, but we will get them through the, through the, um, through the mechanism. Secondly, uh, if you want to change the team or the change makeup, that's fine. But, you know, you may want to take some people down in one area and up in another area. Fine. So what we want to do is put, a, put the freeze on, but then for any sensible proposal, there is a mechanism in the company for that to come through and to be approved. You want people to start thinking cleverly uh, because you want the organization not to freeze. That is, I think, where you're going as well. Because we need to up one area, down one area, build new capabilities somewhere else, repurpose people. That is actually exactly what we need to be doing. But I expect our leaders to think that through, to understand the bigger picture of why we're having a hiring freeze, because to manage the p and it's as practical as that. But within that context, how do we do not stupid things? How can we still get there? And above all, how do we get the business to grow again and start making money again? Because then we can get some breathing space to be able to do these things. So, yeah, a turnaround is never easy. So you've got to be you know, playing with all these levers to get that uh, to get that right and yeah, survive quarter by quarter uh, and get this business back in momentum. And that's why Q4 is so important. You know, delivering a improvement. And your question earlier was about do you know how much patience in there? There's plenty of patience. If we show improvement, I think this business is, is, by the way, super simple. But you've got to do these things in detail and get them right and do them really right. Then we will fly again. Mm -hmm. So I'm very optimistic. And then from that, we can grow Asia, we can do e-commerce, we can do new categories, we can do many, many things. But do the basics first and then we'll get this business back in momentum. Absolutely. I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Let's hope all the others are as well. Yeah, I think they are. I think they are. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Thank well you. done. Thanks. It was fun.